Um, this time we proceed now to the next session, the continuation of our session. Okay. So to, to discuss to us evidence-based urban planning and design, here is Dr. Erica Filie Legara, who is the Aboites profession, profe, professoral, yeah, professorial, sorry about that, Chair in Data Science and Academic Program Director of the Master of Science in Data Science at the Asian Institute of Management, or AIMS. Ladies and gentlemen, let me give the floor now to Dr. Erica Legara. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, since we're running um, out of time, no, I'm really going to stick to the 10-minute to the um, schedule. Let me just share my screen. And also, Erica doesn't have a C. <laughs> it's just a uh, letter K. All right. So anyway, um, again, magandang hapon. Uh, uh, Honorable Mayor Bernard D., um, Yusek uh, Wang, uh, Director Eric, Director Delphine, Director Salonga, maayong hapon again sa tanan. No? Thank you so much for having me. So again, in the next nine minutes, I will share with everyone our framework in urban planning and design for smart, sustainable, and inclusive urbanization, particularly focusing on certain use case, uh, especially involving the lungsod ng kawayan. Uh, Honorable Mayor D is actually here with us. Uh, he'll be giving a message after this uh, presentation. So for everyone, I just want to start with this um, why is my slide not showing uh, with this message? No, we cannot manage and improve what we do not measure. That's why I was so happy to see the, the DTI uh, competitive index because that is really the way to go, right? Because if you don't know what's going on, then how can you improve? And to the students here in this group, this is where SMART comes in. When you talk about SMART, right? It's implementing evidence-based city planning and design. And uh, this also means that we need to be clear about what it is that we need to manage and what it is that we need to improve, right? Is it the human development index of our region, for example? Is it the quality of education, right? Is it gender equality? Do we want more inclusion in our urban systems? Because these would then guide us for the rest of our initiatives from data collection to model building and then deployment. Now, I thought that this needs to be emphasized because more often than not, and I'm speaking about the researchers like me, no? uh, researchers and technologists tend to be obsessed with the data and the technology and the indices, and they forget that these are just tools to achieve much bigger goals for our people. For example, um, in one of our projects in Singapore, the message or the problem statement was very clear. How can we improve the mobility of individuals and the accessibility of amenities? Where can we reinforce our transit services to ensure that there's inclusive mobility? So from these questions, you know that you need to collect mo mobility data, uh, the EasyLink card, and then of course you analyze the information, just like what you're seeing here. Similarly, in another project that I am involved in, the city of Hermosilla in Mexico, through the Harvard Kennedy School Smart Policy Design, the problem was very clear as well. How do we improve the dynamism of the economy of Hermosillo in Mexico? Again, big picture, then we dive into the details. This is actually one of our frameworks that I will be sharing with you today in launching data-driven and smart city projects to first ask the right questions. You know, Filipinos are more, no, not just Filipinos actually, we tend to obsess with like the data and the, the neat and pretty, pretty cool stuff. So here I'm, I'm sharing with you our ongoing smart city projects, thanks to DOSTP Shirt, of course, and our partners. The first one is Project Paturo, which is the focus of the talk today. This is with the Kauaian City Local Government. Paturo stands for Platform for Assessment and Tracking of Urbanization-Related Opportunities. And Project Minerva Naman with Baguio City stands for Monitoring of Indicators for Efficient Redevelopment and Value Assessment. They are a mouthful. So just remember Paturo and Minerva. So for these two projects, again, we start with a question. They're very clear. How do we assess and identify urbanization-related opportunities, ultimately to improve the well-being of the people of Kauaian? And then for the Baguio Minerva, how do we ascertain um, sustainable urbanization in Baguio City? 
So when these projects were conceptualized, the data and the technology actually took the back seat. No? They came later. As mentioned, we can get too caught up with the science and the technology that we forget the essence of these projects, which is ultimately the people. As what Director Pahingit actually mentioned earlier, I was smiling because uh, he's totally on point. Uh, we have to focus on the well-being of our citizens. Like, How can we also improve access to services? How about the health and hygiene for uh, a more gender balanced kind of development? How can we promote social cohesiveness? Or how can we make our cities more livable and inclusive, right? So for the Paturo project, um, from its objectives, it's very clear to us that on the analytics and the metrics front, what we want is an index, pretty much like what um, Director Salonga presented earlier, because it will allow stakeholders to explore various urbanization features to answer again the question that we had earlier. And this index will have multiple features that you can zoom in and measure. Thus, we also ask, how far along is the city in terms of its smart city journey? Or how mature is the city compared to other, other cities? And how can we accelerate, for example, the growth? Again, evidence-based policy design and planning. So here, what you're looking at, this circle, are the different pillars that the Project Paturo focuses on, which in turn dictate what kind of data we need to collect and even generate no, if they're not available, especially when talking about dynamic variables such as traffic and mobility. The project output includes, um, number one, we've delivered a uh, majority of these, a data hub that stores all pertinent data from various sources. You know, uh, if you work with these kinds of projects, um, you will realize that there's a lot of data janitorial um, initiatives as well, because some of the data were only even digitized during the project, like physical maps. We have to transform it into something that the computer can actually understand. Um, the second one is actually um, the dashboard, because you know, we also need to systematically present the measures or the data to our stakeholders. Uh, ultimately, kasi, what we want is to answer the so what question. You know, you know, have all of these indices, you have all of these data and the plots and the complex models, but then the question is, are they actionable? So this is one way to make them actionable, to make them user-friendly so that the decision makers can use them. Right? Um, I'll show you our work in progress later, the sleek dashboard that the team has developed. And number three, of course, uh, the models and the simulations. Ito talaga, this is the heart of our smart city project uh, because this will now allow stakeholders to explore what-if scenarios and to perform futures thinking. Like what if I add a U-turn here? What if we, we, uh, we uh, let's say we lock down this certain uh, part of the city, what will happen? So these are critical uh, features of any urban planning and design, right? And this is just something that I'm also proud of uh, to share with you some of the cool stuff that the team has done. As mentioned, when you work in this particular space, there's a lot of data gaps that you need to bridge. Right, uh, and, and when you want to, to measure, for example, mobility or certain KPIs, data are not usually readily available. So when you talk about livable cities, you may want to look at what well, pollution index, temperature, humidity, etc. right? And again, when you talk, talk about mobility, you would need mobility data, but where are we going to get them? So this would really require a more dynamic way of sensor, uh, of, of sensing, sorry, the city using sensors. So under the Batura project, we're able to somehow bridge these data gaps by deploying sensors uh, and installing them, no? Sa tricycles, imagine that. Um, 200 GPS trackers and about 50 Atmo tubes for environment monitoring, like uh, temperature, pressure, humidity. So we get to monitor them in real time and pipe them into our dashboard. Uh, I just also want to emphasize how important the buy-in of stakeholders in projects such as Paturo and Minerva. It, you know, it's almost impossible to convince the TODA not to install these trackers if we didn't have the full support, for example, of the mayor of Kauai. Very, very important. So um, this is my second to the last slide. Uh, I really just want to emphasize here our framework. One of the things that I learned in uh, 
in the HKS program where I am actually uh, studying right now is that there's no one size fits all approach. So uh, many of the questions that I received after we did that Singapore project is, can you implement that here in the Philippines, here in our city? Uh, that's, that's, that's usually very tough because every city has uh, its own characteristics and personality, but we can have a framework. And this is our framework here that begins with the end in mind, the questions, right? And this is something that we can apply to other cities and administrative regions. As you can see, it's a loop the loop. It means that it's an iterative process because you can never have a perfect city. You can never have a perfect policy. We always have to check, to monitor monitor and measure, and then engage again with the stakeholders, then build what if scenarios that's um, that's important for the decision makers and stakeholders, and then design the policy, design the city and intervene, right? So this is again, uh, the framework that we're using. And now, um, uh, sorry about, about that. Uh, so yeah, I just wanted to, to show here, for example, the safety part and the mobility, accessibility and health and hygiene. For example, if you want to measure inclusion, like how can I improve inclusion in our city? You also need to understand what are the pillars that you need to track. So this is really not just about collecting data and dumping data. It's really understanding the insights that you can get from these data sets. All right. So so here are the technical component, uh, a high overview of our smart city project. Again, ultimately, we want to be able to measure, but then the components here would be uh, the problem at hand, the data collected, and then performing some summary statistics, which are in itself no, very relevant already to, to be part of the evidence-based um, urban design and planning. And of course, the model platform for what if scenarios and futures thinking. I promise I'm going to end in 10 minutes. So this is my second to the last slide. I'm just going to show you this work in progress dashboard. I really love it. No, <laughs> uh, lo uh, Love your own. But no, seriously, this is very actionable. As you can see here, there's the employment, resilience, greenery, accessibility, and the information that you're getting here is dynamic. It's not something like from years ago uh, that's not updated every now and then because we have deployed sensors. And what we want to do is really scale this. In fact, we are now talking to two more cities uh, where we can apply this and even extend it because like what I mentioned earlier, um, every city has its own characteristic, right? For example, this resiliency, uh, what you're seeing here, this is a dynamic model. Like what if there's a lockdown? What will happen? What if there's a, a natural hazard that would hit the city? What will happen to the mobility of the individuals? Okay, and with that, um, I'd like to first thank, of course, uh, all of the people behind this project. I'm just uh, representing them, but really proud of our project leads, complex system scientist, Dr. Alva Presbitero, you will hear from her later, Dr. Valenzuela, our research engineer, JP Antonio, no, for the sleek visas, and, the, and of course, our project manager, Ariel, uh, their brilliance, sustained passion and commitment. This is not easy. Uh, and all of our uh, ongoing and upcoming smart city projects are truly awe-inspiring. Again, maraming maraming salamat po sa tanan. Mayong hapon. Maraming maraming salamat din po, Dr. Erica. Thank you for that crisp presentation and congratulations to Project Paturo and Project Minerva. May we be able to replicate those initiatives in other cities, in the whole cities of the Philippines.